Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries about what's known as the officially largest star in the universe, or basically the largest star we've discovered so far, whose measurements have been extremely accurate. And specifically, we're going to be discussing a star that you're about to see right here, referred to as WOH G64, and some of the recent discoveries that were kind of a little bit surprising. But before we talk more about the star, Let's actually discuss this idea of largest stars, because this topic has been covered by a lot of different channels on YouTube, and you'll actually always get a completely different answer. As a matter of fact, when I just started making videos on YouTube, a lot of discussion was about this star, VY Canis Majoris. Back then, this was considered to be the largest we've ever discovered. But not so long afterwards, it was beat by this star, known as Yoai Scuti. And then, within just a few years, it was once again a different star, this time known as Stevenson 2-18. But if we actually look at the list of some of the largest stars, only some of these stars, such as VY Canis Majoris, is even still in the list. A lot of the other stars have actually moved somewhere down the ranks, or are actually not even on the list anymore. And that's really for one simple reason. In many cases, when it comes to these really large stars, first of all, defining their borders is actually kind of challenging, so we don't actually know where to even measure from. But second of all, a lot of these measurements are usually based on two major things, the exact distance to the star and its luminosity. And so in many cases, the distance was measured incorrectly. With a lot of the new measurements coming from the Gaia telescope, basically reworking these numbers and helping us realize that many stars, including the star UI Scuti, are actually not as large as we thought. And so you can actually find one of the older videos on the channel from just a few years ago, where basically the largest star, UI Scuti, was no longer even on the list. It was much, much smaller than initially assumed. But despite of this, if you were to look at the top of the list, there's one star that's always been there. And that's actually a star that's basically almost at the theoretical limit of how big a typical star can actually get. Here we're of course talking about a limit of a red giant star, a star that one day is going to contract and then go supernova. And well, that star has always been WOH G64, a star that's part of the Large Magellanic Cloud, the neighboring dwarf galaxy next to the Milky Way. And based on a lot of previous measurements involving different telescopes and different techniques, the distance to the star has always been established to be approximately 160,000 light years. And so because the distance in this case was measured much more accurately, and because its luminosity was also measured pretty accurately, for decades now, this star has been basically referred to as the Behemoth Star. And that's actually ever since its first discovery in the 1970s. And because it was discovered by Dr. Westerlund, Olander, and Hayden, the first letters of their names essentially formed WOH, or the name for this star, and many other discoveries by this trio of scientists. There's actually an entire catalog of WOH objects, all of them discovered in the 70s. But here, this object stood out quite a lot. Even back then, it appeared to be extremely large, with its size measured to be anywhere between 1500 radii of the Sun, all the way up to about 2000, and that would basically make it as large as stars can theoretically get. Making this one of the most, if not the most luminous, and most massive red supergiants ever found. But because its radius could be measured so accurately, for many years it was always somewhere on top of the list of the largest stars. But strangely enough, in the last three or four years, it essentially became number one and nothing seems to come even close to being larger. And that's despite the fact that its luminosity and its size have been kind of downgraded. Currently, some of the most accurate calculations suggest that it's about 1540 radii of the Sun in size and approximately 282,000 luminosities of the Sun. Which basically means that if you were to put it in a solar system, it would swallow Jupiter and all of the other planets closer to the Sun. And that's on top of some of the other discoveries from the last decade that were not very easy to explain. For example, back in 2007, researchers used the Very Large Telescope to observe the star once again and discover that it seems to be surrounded by a very large torus-shaped cloud, a massive cloud of dust that seemed to be orbiting around this really large giant star. It wasn't really clear why and what this dust is doing there, but it was there. On top of this, this is a variable star and it seems to change brightness every 800 days. Now, that's not very uncommon, even Betelgeuse does this, but here sometimes the brightness changes are a little bit extreme. Moreover, the mass loss here 
is extreme as well. It's the highest known mass loss of all red supergiants, equivalent to about one Jupiter every single year. So basically this unusual star evaporates so much mass that every year it loses an entire mass of Jupiter through the process of very powerful solar winds. And that's because we think that this was an extreme star even from birth. It was probably about 40 solar masses in mass, and when it just started to expand, it was probably even much larger, possibly up to about 3000 radii of the Sun, emitting more luminosity and losing even more mass. And this was discovered by looking around the star and discovering a huge amount of dust around it that was expelled in the last million years. But despite of this, it's still extremely similar in terms of properties to pretty much every other supergiant star we've discovered, including Betelgeuse. So here the physical parameters are exactly the same as for Vy Canis Majoris, Uy Scuti, Betelgeuse, and many other red supergiants. But some things are a little bit different. For example, this is also a source of many different maser emissions. These are basically kind of like lasers, but emitted in microwaves. Here there are many different emissions by hydrogen, oxygen, and even silicon oxides, which though happens in other stars, in this star seems to be once again a little bit too extreme. And so because of these extreme observations and certain observations that were difficult to explain, there's actually always been a theory that maybe this star has some kind of a partner, possibly an O-type star, but just much less luminous, which disturbs the supergiant once in a while, producing some of these extreme emissions. But because it was basically hidden by the dust clouds and basically hiding somewhere within this torus, confirming its existence was always kind of challenging. Intriguingly, as a side note, you might want to check out a recent video about Betelgeuse where a similar explanation has actually been given for some of the unusual observations from Betelgeuse, including its dimming. So both stars potentially contain partners. The video about this should be in the description. But now, years and years later, we finally have the most accurate observations, once again by the very large telescope that's now been updated and possesses much more resolution and more power, revealing an extremely unusual gas that seems to be poofing away from the star, but in a very bizarre way. It basically forms a kind of a egg shape, the shape that you see right here. And well, once again, this is somewhat challenging to explain because this gas should be more or less spherical and symmetrical, yet this unusual cocoon seems to be stretched by something possibly influencing the star. And the question here is, so what's happening? But even before we discuss some of the potential answers, here I have to highlight the obvious. This is actually the first time ever researchers have been able to take an actual physical image of a star in a completely different galaxy, 160,000 light years away from us. Basically the first ever zoomed in image of a red giant star before it goes supernova in a completely separate galaxy. Obviously we have pictures of Betelgeuse and some other red supergiants, but this one here is much farther away. But in this case, there were also some surprises as well, with the biggest one being luminosity. Turns out the star has become dimmer in just the last 10 years. And the only explanation researchers have is basically once again right here. It's quite possible that it just shed a lot of mass from the center and all of this shed material resulted in a dimming in a very similar way to what happened to Betelgeuse back in 2019. But in many red supergiants, sudden dimming can also be a sign of potential inevitable supernova sometimes in the future, near future. And so here this is a pretty exciting discovery. Now nobody expects this to go supernova yet, not for another 100 years or so, but this bizarre shape and the unusual stretching is definitely kind of surprising. Mostly because based on modeling and based on many different predictions, scientists looking at the star expected to see something entirely different. Much brighter, much more spherical, much more symmetrical. And so for all we know, maybe WOH G64 could be actually in its final life stages and is basically getting ready to throw off even more gas before it prepares for a major supernova. Or maybe, and this is actually a much more likely explanation, here we have the exactly same explanation as with Betelgeuse. Both the cocoon shape, the bizarre shedding, and even additional features, like the dusty torus you see right here, could all be explained if it had some kind of a massive partner that we're just not seeing. By having an undiscovered companion, it could be just experiencing a lot of disturbance as a much smaller star interacts with its envelope and causes occasional eruptions while mixing and stirring the gas in a certain way. Or at least that's the overall conclusion from the study by Onaka and his team that you can find in the description. And so in essence, that's basically what we have right now. 
we have the observations from the officially largest star we've discovered so far, and the star itself seems to be producing some surprising emissions and is also dimming just like Betelgeuse. But there's an older video from just a few years ago that actually talks about another Betelgeuse-like star, another supergiant, that pretty much did exactly the same thing, and back then it was just as surprising as what we see right here. You can learn about this in a video in the description, but in essence, maybe this is actually something that these stars just do all the time. We just have no idea why. But because everything else at this point is just speculation, we're basically just going to wait for more studies and for more explanations. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.